Hello and welcome to In Focus Kentucky. I'm Mario Anderson. Each week on this program, we take a look at issues that matter to you and talk directly to the lawmakers and community leaders who help shape policy and law that affects you. On today's episode, we are focusing on Alcohol Awareness Month. It was established in 1987 by the National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence to increase awareness and understanding of alcohol addiction, its causes, effective treatment, and recovery, all while helping decrease the stigma around the topic. Later on today's program, you'll hear a local perspective on this national topic from the Kentucky chapter of Mothers Against Drunk Driving who support victims at no charge and advocate for stronger laws and create a future of no more victims. But first, we recently caught up with Kentucky State Senator Whitney Westerfield of Hopkinsville who helped lead the charge during the 2019 General Assembly session to make Kentucky the 33rd state to require any person convicted of drunk driving in the Commonwealth to install an ignition interlock in his or her car or face longer license suspension. A number of years ago, we passed a bill that, that made updates to our ignition airlock program. And as good as that bill was, it didn't do enough to, to accomplish what we wanted to do. The devices are woefully underutilized. In 2017, we had 24,500 DUI offenses across Kentucky. Only 4% of those cases ever resulted in using one of these devices. 4%. That's a terrible uh, use case number. We need to get that substantially up because what these devices do is both change behavior and keep folks accountable while allowing them to do whatever they need to do as far as driving. Take their kids to school, go to the grocery, go to the doctor. Uh, we need to get that utilization way, way up and this bill accomplishes that. Uh, at the end of the 2018 session though, the, the Kentucky Distillers Association approached me and said we need to do this and we're willing to help corral all the different stakeholder groups and I welcomed their help uh, and they really showed tremendous leadership uh, and over the last 10 months they've put together an enormous group of stakeholders from transportation cabinet to prosecutors to judges to uh, to the distillers to everybody that can have a voice on this to make sure they have input on how best to make this system work in Kentucky. We looked at other states uh, we looked at uh, the problems that Kentucky's facing. One of the biggest issues was the just the administrative uh, hassle of the program. It was really cumbersome to get it set up and the, the way that the transportation cabinet and the court systems worked together or sometimes didn't work so well together it became very cumbersome and bureaucratic. In fact for the last two and a half years the transportation cabinet's been seeking emergency regs to even make the thing work and be legal at all. That's not the way to run government programs. So one of the other things this bill does is moves the administrative part of this program entirely into the transportation cabinet. They're going to start up a whole new section handled just for this. Uh, and this will, uh, this looks like what other states have done that have been very successful that gets that utilization of these devices way, way up. There's a way to hold these folks accountable and change their behavior. It also gets these devices into the hands of first offense DUI drivers. That's not something that's permitted right now. Um, we wanted to make sure every DUI offender had access to this. It's not mandatory. I wish it was, but it's not. Uh, but we do incentivize using it by creating longer suspension times if you don't. Getting out of committee, there weren't many changes, uh, to be honest. What, what we did between the first committee vote and the second was educate the committee members. We spent more time, all of us talked to various committee members that we have relationships with and we walked through the bill and explained the decisions that, are, that led us to each policy decision that, that we made going into the bill. To get it out of the House, however, there were some changes. Um, and I don't know, I suspect you don't want me to get into the weeds of those, but I can. Um, but we made a few changes to, to make the first offense a little more lenient on the time of suspension. Um, we removed, there was a whole other debate about whether or not uh, a bill f starting in the Senate, a bill starting in the Senate, whether or not it could have revenue raising language. Uh, generally those have to start in the House. We have case law that says it can start in the Senate so long as that's not the primary purpose of the bill, but to avoid any concern about constitutional challenges, the changes in the House included removing all of those references. Uh, we also pushed back the effective date from January of next year to July of next year. July 1st uh, to give the transportation cabinet more time to get ready and to allow us in 2020 to come back and put those fees back in to help pay for that section that's going to implement this program. Um, 
I was okay with all the changes. I blessed each one of them. They're not all what I would have wanted, uh, but you know, you don't want to sacrifice the good for the perfect. Um, and I don't think we did. I think we've accomplished a good bill here. Other than the search warrant language, um, one of the things I hope we can do is make these devices mandatory for all drivers. I don't know that that's going to happen in 2020, uh, but at some point I hope Kentucky does that. I also hope that we can, uh, one of the compromises I made in the House was to make that first offense period of suspension a little more lenient. When it came out of the Senate, it was six months with the device and nine months without. Passing, finally passing out of the House, it was four months with and six months without. I'd like to push that back up to six and nine. Um, I, think, I think it's appropriate to have it uh, a more substantial period of time. And I also know that there's federal funding that we might be eligible for if we get it up to six months and make it mandatory. Uh, so I hope that's something we can accomplish down the road. Perhaps after this program is implemented and we show people that it makes a difference, they'll be more inclined to support that. For now, we couldn't get it done. Kentucky's new ignition interlock law, also known as Senate Bill 85, was signed into law by Governor Matt Bevan on March 26th of this year, and it will go into effect July 1st, 2020. Coming up next, I'll be joined by representatives from Mothers Against Drunk Driving of Kentucky. That's next after a check of your Weather on the Ones forecast. <music>